writing, filmmaking, voice acting, editing. Long ago, the LPS tubers lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when COPPA came along. Let's talk about the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act and how it has affected our platform here on YouTube. For those unfamiliar, my name is Daisy. I run the YouTube channel Puppy Lover 863, which has been my channel name for the past 13 years of me making content. Hi everyone, I'm Kiki LPS. Hi everyone, I'm Hello Studios, also known as Audie or Autumn. Hello there, I am Abby, aka LPS Hostel Films. Hello everyone, my name's Cleo, though you might know me better as MLP Fever on YouTube. Hey everyone, it's me, Jen, and this is my mascot, Misty, and we are from the channel Sugar Diamond. You may know me for my skits, like being an only childlike and Vine Cafe series, like Royal Secrets and Hashtag Daris, and my annual LPS Tube Day award ceremony is held every May 10th. I've been making content for about nine months now. I know, I'm a newbie. I mostly make funny LPS commentary videos, but recently I've been posting some short films too. More coming up. Um, I'm a longtime LPS customizer here on YouTube. LPS Tuber, been making content since 2017. Uh, most of my content is known for customs, of course, but I'm also known for making cinematic LPS film, such as LPS Soulbounds and LPS Extraordinary Magic. I am an LPS tuber that has been making videos for almost seven years now, specifically stories that are of the fantasy, dramedy, or romance genre. I have been making LPS and MLP content for YouTube for over eight years now, and I've never really taken any break in that time, so I can say I am pretty dedicated to making YouTube videos for my followers and for my own entertainment. Anyone who follows my channel will know that my content type is quite scattered, and there are reasons for that. But overall, the content I most identify with making is story content with, in fact, my little figurines like you're seeing right now. We have been making LPS content since November 2015, so almost eight years. The most common video I make on my channel are probably short films and films, as well as skits, an occasional series, very rarely music videos, and a lot of random, really random videos. I make this type of content because, well, originally it was because I wanted to be a writer and this was a way for me to tell stories, and now it is because I am a writer and an aspiring filmmaker, and I use this to test my skills and still tell my stories. Surprisingly, I've never had another channel besides my current one, but I've always known that I wanted to be an LPS tuber. So even though I've only started nine months ago, I've been watching LPS Tube since like forever. YouTube has one of the biggest online communities for LPS filmmaking fans. While I love doing my commentary content, what initially made me become a fan of LPS Tube was the films. Storytelling is such a big part of my creative outlet and LPS helped make those projects happen. While they might not be everyone's form of actors, 
it's a way for me to create stories without a high budget or showing my face. I put a huge amount of time and effort and thought into making these kind of videos and it truly means a lot to me to be able to creatively express myself. I've always wanted to make stories and making videos on YouTube with my littlest pet shops has been a fantastic creative outlet for me. I really enjoy making short films and films mainly and like series is just because people can relate to just the hardships in, in the films and I get a lot of times comments of people saying like, oh I really relate to this character and like this is such a good message and that is why I really enjoy making these. YouTube is by far the most popular like video sharing app and website and you can share long videos whereas like other social media you can only do like a few minutes and so YouTube is just, I don't know, you have time to tell like a whole story through a video. For me, making videos with Littlest Pet Shops has served as my creative outlet for the longest time. Having small bobblehead animals utilizes less resources with a wide range of materials for outfits, set designs, you name it. I don't have to be on camera, and at the time I wasn't allowed to show my face, so this was my plan B. And I can be my own boss, and through this medium I was able to start a small business of my own, just posting content like this. Not to mention that the online community of Littlest Pet Shop creators like me has been nothing short of the friendliest and sweetest people I've ever met on this platform. YouTube's partnership program and public platform gives me a space for self-expression and allows me to find a niche community of fans and creators that enjoy the same things that I do. My main hub has always been YouTube since my humble beginnings, especially during the days where I felt so out of place and different from everyone in real life. COPA, in my understanding, is the Privacy Protection Act for Children. It is an effort to stop collecting personal information for children. This is usually used by corporations to target specific ads and make more money in turn. Um, basically, how I think of it is it's for protecting children under 13 years old just from content and releasing their private information online since they are still minors restricting like their access to what's appropriate content and not. September 4th, 2019 was when I first heard about COPPA being implemented. Someone on Twitter retweeted a message from the YouTube team, and from there I found an article explaining further on how COPPA would affect content creators. What made me do a double take was the part where videos featuring toys, even if children were not the target audience, would be affected. I was so shocked and confused. Why was this happening now, after nine years of making content with no issues or repercussions from the platform, and let alone 14 years at the time of YouTube existing? Why were independent creators being punished for what the YouTube platform did, which was allegedly collecting children's data without parental consent? I mean, it's not like we were aware of collecting children's data, let alone had the attention to. I assume the majority of people don't want to indulge in that kind of practice. My initial reaction to the cup of changes back in 2019 was concern. It sounded like YouTube had the best intentions in wanting to protect children from having their data stolen, but we're going about it in the wrong way that would ultimately hurt a lot of creators. Uh, when COPA was first announced on YouTube, I was very alarmed, along with many other LPS uh, creators, creators, in general, COPA looked like a doomsday for everyone. Their rules were very strict, and the consequences were very dire. Also, one of them was a $40,000 fee, I believe, which is insane and no one can possibly afford to pay something that crazy. I think I first heard about Copper through other people's YouTube videos and then through YouTube formally announcing these changes. Now, at the time, my channel was generally on a downward trend anyway, so it perhaps didn't upset me as much as it did other YouTubers. Having said that, though, hearing that comments would be taken away was a real blow. I understand the background of Copper, but it's largely completely unfair, especially considering the fact that this is US law and I don't even live in the US. But I of course did educate myself on this and 
through all of it, I could not see why we should remove the comments. And I think for most people, that was the most upsetting part, because YouTube is a social media. And if you can't socialize on the media, it takes away a lot of the appeal, and you may as well just be watching Netflix alone. Of course, having said that, we can't undermine the importance of changing how people monetize their content when a lot of creators in this field were actually working full time on their channels. If you take away people's money, you take away their ability to make videos constantly, and then you take away the community. I I think I was really confused when I heard about it and I was like oh like I don't really know what that is and I think at the time I think I was still watching like other like kid friendly YouTubers that would have been affected by COPA and so I was like oh wow this is like much bigger than I thought. I just remember a lot of people including myself just being super confused on what was COPA how were they gonna like find kids videos and how were they gonna like change them so it protects kids and how, like, how will that affect us? I wasn't really sure, and everything just didn't seem super clear to me. And if I'm being honest, at the time, I didn't really think much of it. I was just like, okay, this is gonna be, like, a weird change, but I think that we won't really be affected as much as we actually ended up being. I didn't ever really consider pivoting my channel, but once I saw a lot of other LPS creators, like, sort of panic and bring up more awareness around this new policy, I was like, getting a little more invested and, and trying to learn more about it. Before COPPA, I wasn't an LPS tuber. So when I first heard about COPPA, all I really heard was that it was a new protection act that was going to be put in place for the safety of children, but had a very general guidelines, which would heavily affect anything deemed as childish for kids. At that time, I used YouTube all the time to watch my favorite LPS content creators, and I was entering my early teens. LPS was my outlet. Hearing the news that COPPA might heavily affect the community that was my safe space left me terrified. YouTube, which was previously a safe space for LPS fans, was now apparently going to be its downfall. It made me feel like I shouldn't like LPS because of COPPA. I tried to stop being an LPS fan and collector because if YouTube is saying that this is for kids, then maybe it was and I needed to grow up. So for two years, I completely rejected this creative side of me. To me, all of these rapid changes happening at once, starting at the beginning of 2020, it just felt like an unnecessary one-size-fits-all bandage to a much larger problem we have on the platform. If you think about it, kids will still and have lied about their age. Plus, wouldn't a parent handing a device to their child automatically count as consent? Surely there must be another way to comply with COPPA without taking away incentives for family-friendly content. With those incentives taken away, the motivation for making family-friendly content would just be dropped and we would have more, I would say, adult content. Since the changes were enacted, I noticed that the views on my videos did definitely start to go down more, and a lot of my videos did start getting marked as made for kids for featuring toys in them. January 6th, 2020 was when the COPPA changes started rolling out. As anticipated, videos that were marked as made for kids had a huge drop in revenue, though not immediately. However, the following year was when the YouTube bots started tagging and overriding my not made for kids tags as made for kids. And the more that my high performing videos were unwillingly flagged, the more it became unviable to keep making content as a business. Comments on made for kids videos were turned off and I couldn't even go back and read through the archive of lovely comments I received from my fans as well as the mutuals that I've come to respect and admire over the years. As I have already said, back at the change of 2019 to 2020, my channel was already seeing diminishing returns. So luckily for me, if you can call it luckily, I didn't see much change in the terms of making money. It was absolutely there, the drop but it was not that massive because I was not making much to begin with. But as I've said, the big blow was all those comments going away because at the time I actually was panicked and thought, oh, I better change all of my content as marked for kids. The changes that I noticed that have been affecting my channel are the most is my monetization has gone down, not too, too much, but it's still enough to notice a little bit as well as my subscriber growth. It was growing exponentially before and it was growing pretty rapidly too. And ever since COPA, it's still growing, but it's at a much slower rate. So it's not as much as I once was. 
Another thing that bothers me is on mobile, sometimes if you put like a made for kids video in mini player, it pauses the video and I don't understand why they would need to do that for Copa. But the most frustrating thing is comments. All I want to see is comments, guys. Like, I just want to see comments. That's how we get feedback. That's how we get ideas. That's how we know if you guys are enjoying the videos and that's how we can interact with other LPS tubers and LPS lovers. But at the same time, early 2020 was when a lot of the world was in lockdown due to COVID. And so I'm thinking that's where my view time came from. Everyone was just shut inside and so many new LPS tubers joined the platform too, which really helped just discover each other and and grow the community. But over time, ever, ever since like after May 2020, my channel has slowed down on subscribers and I'm hitting a low way lower than I've seen it <laughs> in a long, long time. So subscriber growth has slowed down immensely. I have noticed as a whole, much of the LPS tube community has gone down in views since the COPPA changes were enacted. Being a small LPS tuber means that the first couple of views mean everything. If you're not babysitting your video and COPPA hits you with a no comments, rest assured your video is going to flop. And it's really discouraging because, oh my gosh, do I spend a lot of time on these videos. To this day, despite being informed that creators have the choice on whether or not to label their videos as made for kids, the YouTube bots still continue to override my settings and mark my videos as made for kids, especially my high performing ones, which further adds to the revenue drop. Even videos that are years old and are especially my highest performing skits with 100,000 to 1 million views, and it seems like any skits that involve toys, whether or not they're intended for kids or not, fall under a child-directed blanket now and are no longer a viable form of content creation for LPS creators like me. In conversations I had with some of my fellow creator mutuals, it was recommended that I include swearing or violence to avoid getting flagged, as it worked for a lot of fellow creators out there. But I wouldn't and couldn't. It pretty much goes against my whole brand. Plus, I don't even swear in real life. In my opinion, it's really not fair for creators to change themselves and their content that they've been pursuing for years and years and have building for years in order to appeal to these policies. It's hypocritical with how in 2017, channels were flagged for being too adult and now we're being flagged for being too childish. Like, what even is acceptable content at this point anymore? I would say that that does affect me today. Over time, I look at my analytics a lot and I notice like, oh wow, I've gotten a lot less subscribers than I've gotten in a long time. And obviously it's not about the numbers, but at the same time, it is a little concerning when you see your channel slowly crippling just because you spend so long building it up. And after 2020, a lot of the video recommendations just weren't getting recommended as much. Um, like for your own channel and stuff, so I think that had a big impact. As far as present day COPA is concerned, my channel is kind of unique in the fact is I'm not really getting COPA strikes ever anymore. Aside from that Soulbound video, COPA has left me alone to the most part, and even the issues I have had in the past with COPA turning off my comments, that's basically dissipated recently. I probably attest this to the fact my content is made crafting-wise. Uh, it's presented in a manner that is kind of appealing to adult audiences. A lot of the comments I got on my videos are from people who come directly from doll customizing videos, uh, D&D miniature creation videos, My Little Pony uh, restoration videos, or just content that would be described as adult-oriented creation. All in all, honestly, it's been very kind to me and I'm really thankful for that. Again, I would attain it to being a mostly crafty type of creator. Uh, in the videos I make too, they're basically just long monologues while I'm painting and I talk about a variety of topics. It's presented in a manner that can be enjoyed by children, of course, but there's also mature topics thrown in there like the weather with hurricanes and the problems with animals going into getting extinct, and my thoughts on the matter of that. <laughs> Topics that anyone can enjoy, but it's not presented in a manner that is meant for kids, and I think anyone who watches my videos for a little bit, after the first minute or so, you can understand that I'm not really speaking to a child, I'm speaking to somebody that has the level of comprehension that can 
understand mature themes and, you know, just has an appreciation for art. It, there's not really supposed to be a sort of segregation in that matter to say, okay, I'm making this for general audiences. Luckily, to this day, most of my videos are not affected by copper. There are, of course, quite a few, but it's not been a massive problem for my channel uh, so far, I should say. Having said that, my channel is by far not the whole community. I know a lot of people have been impacted a lot more than I have by this, and I can't really say why. It just seems to be a luck of the draw thing. So as much as I consider myself lucky with this, I know a lot of people who haven't been, and that has really negatively impacted the community. Truly, whether or not content is made with children in mind is impossible to determine. They like to say that, oh, if it's a cartoon character, it's for kids. If it's a toy, it's for kids. But that seems highly reductive and way too simplified. As far as outside of my channel goes, I can't really speak to the effects since I can only look at a base level observation. When it first came out, of course, we had beloved content creators leaving like LPS Ace, LPS Hannah. If you go in their videos right now, most of them are marked as made for kids. I think that was manually done by those creators because I wanted to avoid any potential issues. But the fact that it even caused them to leave in the first place was a major effect that really saddened me, I suppose. It was just a huge dent in our community that is kind of irreplaceable and these people are now gone because of this this act. Uh, along with the creator Kinsey Lee, she was one of my favorite creators. She created such beautiful LPS film that were very much not for kids. Uh, the topics were very uh, adult oriented. Um, she was just a beautiful poet and writer. You could just tell she put so much into her film and though she did leave for a variety of reasons, Copa was kind of the kicker. I don't think Copa was enough to make a truly passionate individual just up and leave LPS2, but it was really intimidating to see. Most of the people still here are the people who just really love creating LPS content and were willing to put up with the struggles it takes to remain a creator in such a niche field that was already kind of declining due to LPS not being released anymore and Copa just kind of kicking you when you're down, I suppose. I think as a viewer of LPS videos myself, something I love to do is putting other videos in mini play just so I can multitask. I love multitasking, so I would like to visit their channel maybe and look at their other videos or scroll for my next LPS video I want to watch. And having a mini player pause the video is so annoying. And sometimes if you find an awesome LPS video, you can't leave a comment and you can't support that person so they don't know that you're there when you are there to support them and they'll be like, Ugh, no one comments. Because comments mean so much to a creator. And so without them, it's really disheartening. Looking at the effects of COPPA outside of my own channel, I noticed that community visibility was affected the most over time. There was a significant drop in comments, which resulted in a drop of engagement, which meant that LPS content in general was less likely to be recommended by the algorithm. And for new and aspiring creators especially that haven't been on the platform for as long, are less likely to be discovered. Like I mentioned before, the videos and channels that were marked as made for kids had comments completely turned off, so we weren't able to share feedback with one another. And it's how our community is able to engage with one another What's especially heartbreaking to me is that the revenue drop and lack of visibility as a result of these COPPA changes has led to creators quitting or disappearing. I don't think it really hit me until the biggest LPS tuber, LPS Hannah, who had just entered her 10 year anniversary and had hit 500,000 subscribers at that point, had made a video saying that she was leaving LPS dupe due to the COPPA changes. From there, I decided to do a little research to see if other toy creators were affected. And sure enough, besides Littlest Pet Shops, My Little Pony, American Girl, and Beanie Boos have been most affected. But for some reason, Lego stop motion skits are safe. Barely any of them have been marked as made for kids. Not to mention that the majority of LEGO content creators I've seen are predominantly male versus the other brands I mentioned that are a predominantly female community, which I think is a little too early to come to any conclusions yet, but there's a lurking suspicion that gender bias may be at play. 
I mean, people have commented on my voice saying that I sound maybe 13 years old when in reality, I'm actually a 25 year old adult. Recently on September 10th, 10 of my videos got hit by Copa. That caused me to do a little research, like how do I not get caught by Copa? So I looked up videos and I like put toys in and I saw a lot of MLP videos of people really frustrated, uh, much like our community, just frustrated with everything. And at the same time, I also looked up Lego. I know Lego is a super popular toy for all ages, so I'm like, I wonder if they got hit. And most of the Lego videos I saw, including like short films and skits, they did not get hit. So that is just really frustrating to me. I understand how Lego could be seen differently, but I also feel at the same time, LPS and Lego are very similar in a lot of ways. I think that the more views one of your videos gets, the more likely it's going to be affected by Copa. Most of my most viewed videos on my channel have all been hit by Copa in one way or another. A lot of my films and short films and my most popular music videos, more of my like just films, all these random videos I've done that get the most views on my channel, they go after the big views. And so all those really popular videos I have don't get monetized anymore and they won't get recommended as much, which means my channel won't be found as much. And so that is just super disheartening. And a lot of my series episodes have been hit too. We also know that a lot of big LPS tubers, such as LPS Hanek, for example, quit ju just due to Copa, which is really sad to know that Copa had a really big effect on her channel and that she just couldn't get around it. My observations from LPS tubers currently regarding Copa affecting their channel. I've just noticed content that is more monologuing, just talking, uh, or informative. Especially this is prevalent on LPS Honey's channel. I haven't seen her, her videos being marked as made for kids. She mostly makes uh, unboxing content. That content is really never made as marked for kids, along with news-oriented content. So like, here's this brand new news about the LPS coming next year, blah blah blah. Those, those kind of informative videos never get marked as made for kids. However, I have noticed content that would fall under skits or storytelling. That's been particularly vulnerable to Copa, and I've seen that a lot on other LPS creators uh, that have gotten their stuff marked as kids, along with music videos specifically. I've noticed those get marked as made for kids a lot, but Skits is kind of the hot spot of where Copa likes to strike because it's very appealing to kids to, to click on skits. So I can kind of see why that would be a vulnerable area to where Copa can easily find room to strike. Unfortunately, skits are just something a lot of people like to make. Like, people like to tell stories and I'm included in that. My series projects are my soul of my channel. It's what- it's why I make videos. It's what gives me joy, I suppose. I wouldn't really want to make videos if I couldn't make those videos in particular. It's what I'm most proud of. It's what I love to do. And I'm just- I'm so happy that my- my series videos have been left alone because they take so long to make. They take an unbelievably amount of work, like months and months of work and creation, and <laughs> if they got marked as made for kids, basically being shadow banned, I would literally cry. I would cry my eyes out and my heart mourns every time I see someone else's story time skit type videos, things they take a lot of time and put a lot of effort into being marked as made for kids, having the comments turned off, just shadow banned. It, it sucks. It, it literally <laughs> is the worst slap in the face to a creator and it's just really unfortunate that we have to modify our content to try to fit into someone else's rules when YouTube is a platform for you to express yourself however you want to and just unfortunate that that has to happen and something we have to consider now as an LPS tuber these days. So for me, apart from some maybe older content, more recent content of mine featuring, in fact, toys like LPS has not been aimed at under 13s, which is how they define a kid. A kid versus a minor is actually different, apparently, and a kid is only a child under the age of 13. 
It's in my honest opinion that no content can truly only be aimed at children and only be made to appeal to them because we can't really know what a creator was thinking when they made something. Even the creator his or herself may not know. Children and adults alike can enjoy anything. It doesn't have to be something that conventionally appeals to children. Some children have very grown-up tastes. It doesn't make them a grown-up, though. And it's the same with adults who enjoy watching cartoons or, in fact, LPS videos. That doesn't actually legally make them a child, just because they enjoy something that is originally aimed at children. So with that definition, there can't really be a definition for something for kids. Of course, having said all this, LPS toys like this one are so old now that anybody who grew up with them cannot be a kid anymore. It's actually not possible unless you had them secondhand. As for most of my viewers, of course, I know that's true because most of them are coming back to watch my latest LPS videos for nostalgia because they're grown-ups now. Overall, if I could change anything, you'd probably want to change it at the source and change how copper was enacted and make some of it make some sense. All these laws are too old to account for social media and it doesn't make any sense not to review that. Truth be told, if this is about tracking children's data, I actually think that's safer for kids than getting random adverts directed generally at grown-ups. Ironically, I think we could make it that cookies and data kept children safer. If a child is going to be seeing adverts anyway, why can't they just see adverts of things that are directed towards them instead of potentially inappropriate products? That's my question. I don't truly see it any different as when you were watching Cartoon Network as a kid and got toy adverts in the break. What is the difference there and why is that even a problem? The criteria of made for kids content, according to COPPA, that applies to my channel is that I use plastic toys as a medium for my storytelling. My definition of made for kids content is content that is literally geared towards and appropriate for children to watch and understand. Like I said before, there are topics and themes in my videos that kids will not understand and I personally do not make my videos with children in mind as my audience. When looking at the criteria on the FTC's official website and on YouTube's community guidelines, I feel that the only criteria that applies to my content on what constitutes made for kids is the use of toys. But the YouTube community guidelines explicitly state that just because your content may have one or more of these features, the criteria that they're looking for, doesn't automatically mean your content is made for kids. And yet the bots continue to override my settings. I think the biggest problem with the use of toys criteria is that it doesn't outline the difference between playing with toys versus figure filmmaking. And figure filmmaking is a term that I would use to describe our medium. Based on the content I've observed in the past four years since COPPA was instituted, here is what I would consider made for kids versus general audience content if I had to give my own definition. Please remember that this is just my own interpretation and definition. This is not the official definition of the YouTube and FTC's criteria. So first off, I believe that made for kids is content that is directly and intentionally targeted at kids. In particular, three to seven year olds or preschoolers in general from what I've seen. These are the kind of videos that tend to feature kids, includes educational content, has notable characters like, for example, Peppa Pig and Coco Melon, but it's blatantly obvious from the content and from the educational nursery rhyme uh, preschool character tropes that this is indeed made for kids versus general audience content. It could be content that's made for anyone, that anyone at any age can watch, kind of like general audience content that you'd see on TV. It can be family friendly, but doesn't include themes or topics of stories that are exclusively or overtly for kids. For example, animated content like the YouTube animators of today, figure filmmaking like we do with in the Little's Pet Shop community, and independent influencers in general versus huge companies. Which brings me to my next and most important point in this argument. It is my belief that COPPA has been especially hurting independent businesses and creators more than corporations or toy companies with multiple resources and multiple income channels that they can still survive off of. When that space is overshadowed by these big companies, and these new updates and settings turn away and disregard the effects that it has on independent creators like myself, that's gonna lay down some pretty serious repercussions on people's livelihoods and businesses and potentially perspectives of the platform. I don't think that a lot of my videos are 
only made for kids and I don't think a lot of videos on LPS tube were only made for kids I think that it just goes for the whole family and everything that on LPS tube doesn't need to be just made for kids I think videos that are classified as made for kids are videos like Coco Melon or videos primarily targeted to like toddlers and really young children like learning like shapes and colors and all that basic stuff but I don't think that telling stories with this like these plastic toys as a medium like an artistic medium of storytelling I don't think that that should be made for kids because a lot of my films and short films that have been hit like they're they're targeted towards teenagers and young adults like what sorry sorry it takes place in a high school with love drama and everything like sorry YouTube if I could change one thing about YouTuber Copa I would definitely change YouTube's how they find and like mark videos because I think that it's super ineffective and I think that it's really inaccurate and it's sporadic like it comes at the most random times and at the most random times it just randomly turns off comments like five times in a day and so you need to babysit your video for like five hours in order to leave comments on which is so foolish and I think that it says in the rules that even if children aren't the primary audience but you still use like toys or characters or games or songs that target children that they're still marked and I don't think that toys and stories are just for children I think that it goes for everyone like we're talking about Disney movies for example Disney movies right that's that's what you think of when you think of like fam like a family movie night right that would not be like made for kids right it's a family movie it's literally called like a family movie and why can't LPS videos be like that too in fact, I have gotten so many comments of, of people saying, Oh, I love watching this with my brothers and sisters. Or I love watching this with my family on the TV. Like, it's the same thing, just in a different form. It's not animation. It's with these figures. But it's basically the same thing. So, yes, I would, I would change that. <laughs> but I think the most important thing is having comments. I get so discouraged when I see comments, especially on your most viewed videos. That's probably when you get the most comments. And so that's... Those are the comments I like to go back on and be like, oh yeah, I remember. That's how I can improve that video. Or like, I can take this knowledge and advice that they give me and use it when I go forward to make changes to my videos to make them better and more enjoyable. And so having comments is just sad. And I was, I was thinking a filter on comments could help. So if they're worried about children giving away like their phone number or email or address in a comment, there could just be a bot, like a filter, like a, in the comments that just, you know, hides and deletes all those comments that look like it could be a phone number or address or whatever. And boom, boom, comments are available. <laughs> like, yeah, because they already have filters for like bad words in comment sections. And if you don't have a word that you want in a comment section, you can like type it in and, and YouTube will, boom, erase it from every single video on your channel or whatever or hide it. So I feel like that could be super easy if, if that's what they're concerned about with children and comments. In my opinion, I felt that the initial reactions and policies implemented for COPPA was a rush job. And from looking at other kid-friendly websites, there are other ways to comply with the law without hurting independent creators or endangering children. Some of those ways could include updating account faces so it's different for each user. For instance, interfaces for kids that are under 13 years of age can have comments hidden from them as well as other COPPA related features, whereas adult interfaces for people 13 years of age or older can have all of the interactive features regardless of if a video is made for kids or not. Another way to comply with the law would be having virtual disclosure forms and resources to educate parents about YouTube with their kids and obtain some form of parental consent with households, maybe one or more. Now, while complying under the law to protect children, it is just as vital to focus on aiding independent content creators as well. Perhaps develop incentives to make family-friendly content and increase interactions within communities of adult collectors so that people still have a place to engage with one another safely and live up to the original YouTube slogan to, quote, broadcast yourself. In the last four plus years that I've navigated a post coppa landscape as a family-friendly content creator who indulges in filmmaking, I think it's now important more than ever that we consider the plethora of ways creators, viewers, business executives, and kids and parents 
define made for kids content. If we as a community and even the business executives on YouTube took some time to do a bit of digging and research on people's definitions and perspectives of made for kids versus general audience content, that can give us further insight on things that need to be changed in order to make the YouTube website more appealing and engaging and favorable for all parties. That's not to say that COPPA is the problem. I truly believe that COPPA's intentions are a good thing. It's just as important to protect children from having their data scraped, just as important as it is to protect independent creators that helped YouTube get its footing and become mainstream over time. For now, at least unless things change for the better, my plans for the future going forward is slightly pivoting my content. The LPS niche will still be the same, but I'm going to be experimenting with other video formats to appeal to the algorithm. I personally believe that COPA is a good thing. I think it's good that it exists. I think it's important to protect kids. I just think the only thing that really needs to change is YouTube's tyrannical enforcement of its policies on their creators. I think it's an unfair system that has forced a lot of people to quit being a creator, a content creator. And I think the changes need to lie on YouTube themselves, balancing the issues that come from making YouTube Kids content, specifically the monetization issues, because that is the main important aspect of why COPA does not work. People need to be able to make money, their livelihoods if they depend on YouTube, and there's just no justifying making content as an adult if you can't make money for it and you can't afford to keep doing it, and that's just reality, I suppose. My main issue with Copper, if you can't already tell, is that it just doesn't make any sense in a post-social media world. It doesn't take into account the reality of children on the internet. Because they are on the internet, we know that, they're not gonna get off anytime soon. We need to understand how to keep children safe better than this. And I think we as a society need to be a lot more open-minded about what kids and adults can enjoy. People are people and truly can enjoy anything at any age. There seems to be some pretty backward reasoning here. If you look at things, for example, like Disneyland, Walt Disney originally made that to appeal to kids and adults alike. Nowadays, people tend to think of it as only being for kids, but in actual fact, it was never intended that way because truly grown-ups and kids alike like having fun, they like cute things, and why shouldn't we? We're all just people, and there's nothing wrong with liking Littlest Pet Shops at any age. YouTube does not make making videos rewarding at all, but the community does, and that's why I'm still here today. While I think Kappa sucks, it definitely has made our content and creators stronger. I plan on making some more commentary videos as well as some more films, and I'm going to travel a lot next year, so maybe I'll start to sprinkle in some LPS vlogs here and there. I'm hopeful. I'm a small channel, but I am mighty. Copa is sort of harsh. They're really spontaneous, like you don't know when they're gonna hit, so you gotta be prepared, okay? Always have your little emergency kit, and always be prepared on the, on the tip of your toes, you know? And as a creator that gets striked by Copa a lot, well, not too badly, but still a decent amount, what I'm gonna do going forward, probably within the next year or so, is to try to pivot my content um, to more mature topics. But at the same time, I, I already know my audience and I don't want to give you guys something less than what you subscribed for. So I'm trying to find a balance. Or if it gets really bad, I might consider transitioning to a different video platform. I've heard of Rumble, but I don't know if that's like for videos or like video gaming or what type of content is usually on that channel, so I don't know. I still need to figure out what I'm going to do, and I think we're all in this together, so. To any aspiring LPS tubers out there, I say don't give up. It is still totally worth it, even though it can be discouraging and difficult when your videos do get struck. Making LPS videos is still very rewarding and very fun and very awesome. For any of you that want to become an LPS tuber, it's going to take a lot of patience, but trust yourself. Make friends and have fun, because if you don't enjoy the content you make, then how will your audience enjoy it too? And if Kappa messes with you, just know, Cakey LPS always got your back. I think my biggest piece of advice going forward for people is to just keep making what you want to make and don't be too upset 
when a few videos are struck by copper. In my experience, it's actually not the majority of videos. I can't speak for everyone, I can only speak for myself. So if you want to study my content and maybe if there's anything different I've done, you can do. But I think maybe it helps add some more adult themes and sadly even maybe some more profanity into your videos. I know that helps a lot of people. It may sound like strange advice, but whatever works. My plans going forward are to pretty much just doing more of what I've already been doing. Nothing too bad has happened so far, but I would really, really love to see this changed. We're not living in constant fear of things being taken down. So in conclusion, policymakers and YouTubes alike need to look to the future. And to those of you watching, whether you're a viewer or an aspiring YouTuber navigating the post kappa landscape, my biggest advice would be to just experiment and adapt. Understand what platform you're working with, understand that these kappa changes, for now at least, are here to stay, and figure out what types of content you can make that not only appeal to the algorithm, but also appeal to your fans, as well as types of genres and formats that you enjoy making as well. Be aware, but not anxious, of the policies that exist. If you're just starting, use that knowledge to guide your content if you want to avoid getting marked down. And quoting former LPS tuber Fantasyland Films for a second, there's really no secret ingredient to making good videos, but if you believe in the stories and that the content you make is special, they will be. Hey guys, it's Daisy from the future here. I'm currently editing the video that you're watching right now. I realized that at the very end, I forgot to discuss a very important point, talking point, um, regarding the Kappa issue. Um, there's a YouTuber called Lula Loopsy, and I found her channel because she made a recap of the entirety of LPS Popular, and I started following her. Unfortunately, one of her videos, which was a deep dive into Playhouse Disney, got flagged by Kappa, and she was posting all over Instagram and on social media about her trying to appeal the video, and apparently it didn't work. They denied her appeal. And I started chatting with her on Instagram being like, oh yeah, unfortunately this issue is all too common, and that I was planning on making this video. And later she made a post on YouTube and a story on Instagram saying that she was able to get her video restored. Comments were back, the Made for Kids label was turned off, and I was just like, Wait, how is this possible? I thought her appeal got denied. So I reached out and I was like, oh, that's amazing news. So the appeal worked. And she said that initially they rejected it, but she tweeted Team YouTube on Twitter and said that they were going to revisit it. And it actually ended up working. Contacting Team YouTube on Twitter actually helped override her appeal rejection. Um, I knew that YouTube Team Twitter was there, but I'm embarrassed to admit that in the four years that we've had COPPA, I never would have thought to use it to revisit COPPA appeals. Now, I'm curious, has anyone tried contacting Team YouTube on Twitter? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't, I wonder if any brave LPS tuber out there is willing to give this a try and see if this actually works? Because if it does, there could be, there could be hope for our community, you guys. Personally, I'm a little hesitant to do this because there were so many of my videos that were marked as made for kids unwillingly and I'm worried that the team won't believe me and mark my whole channel. So if there are any brave souls out there that are willing to give it a try and test this out, please write in the comments and let me know how it goes. So that's something I'm hopeful about if this team YouTube Twitter bailout actually works. But um, yeah, just wanted to let you know that and let's get back to the video. And also go subscribe to Lula Loopsy if you haven't yet. She makes such cool nostalgia content and deep dives. Highly recommend you check her out. I would say if you're aspiring LPS tuber or you just like to view LPS videos, I would just say be prepared and be adaptable to whatever YouTube has coming our way. We don't really know and YouTube is <laughs> so weird. So I would just say we need to stick together as a community and just support each other. You know, whatever happens, we're in this together. We're in it for the long haul, guys, so <laughs> we got this. <laughs> and trying to look at the positives instead of all the negatives, but it's really hard to do, especially when COPA strikes, so yeah. Also, another little reminder for your channel, if you have videos that are marked for kids and you try to appeal them with YouTube, whatever comments you do, 
just know that there's a chance they will strike you again. If they deny all your or all your appeals, they denied like all mine, they came back and marked even more of my videos. So they were just like coming back at me. At me. <laughs> like, YouTube is a savage like that, okay? <laughs> like They were like, oh, this girl appealed and we denied her all of them. Even though I had super good reasons. They were like, oh, we denied all of them. So I'll just say a little warning. It's a little risk on your part if you want to do that or not. But I don't know. We're already into year three, almost year four about COPA and I think that we have stuck really strong together as a community and I'm hoping with the revival of new LPS in 2024 that more people will come to this community and it'll bring more attention to people who run YouTube and that maybe they'll get more educated on our community and see that's not really made for kids. But yes, final note, stay strong and stay together and support each other and we got this guys, we're a strong community. I think the main takeaway of all this is just don't be discouraged. There are ways to coexist with COPA using toys, using LPS, make the content you want to make, be who you want to be on YouTube, and I hope that your content doesn't get marked as made for kids, but it's something we're kind of are all fighting together in a sense, and I just, I hope that in the future things can change and become more fair for creators so they can make whatever they want. Um, thank you, Daisy, so much for inviting me to speak a little bit about this. I'm pretty passionate about talking about this. I've spoken twice on my channel about this topic, and it, it means a lot to me to, to have a voice for creators with this issue because it's just tyrannical. Again, it's, it's unfortunate, and I am hopeful for change in the future. Bye!